Get ready for a mind-blowing space adventure as we dive into the fascinating world of space travel and innovation. However, despite the successful deployment, the mission encountered challenges. The Paragon Lander, which was one of the payloads, experienced difficulties after separating from Vulcan. The lander failed to orient itself correctly towards the sun, which led to a rapid decline in its battery levels. The team worked diligently to regain control of the spacecraft and recharge its batteries. Although the lander remains in Earth's orbit, the focus shifted to maximizing the collection of scientific data and information. Brace yourself as we delve into an exciting comparison between two game-changing creations, Vulcan and Starship. Join us on this visionary exploration where we unravel the striking differences in approaches towards solving the challenges of the cosmos. Witness the magnificence firsthand as we reveal SpaceX's groundbreaking marvel, Starship, designed unabashedly for full reusability right from its inception. Prepare to be awestruck by the grandeur of Starship and gain valuable insights into how it triumphs over Vulcan. Sky's the limit, folks. Grab your astronaut gear and embark on this enlightening journey now. Buckle up and let's blast off into a future of endless possibilities. Marvel at Starship's groundbreaking design, created exclusively for reusability, completely revolutionizing our galactic endeavors. Brace yourself for an enthralling voyage into the cosmos as we undertake the epic journey of comparing Vulcan and Starship. Buckle up, space enthusiasts! In this groundbreaking video, we explore the thrilling differences in approach to solving the challenges of the cosmos. It becomes glaringly evident why SpaceX's Starship reigns supreme when it comes to reusability. Unlike Vulcan, Starship was meticulously designed from the ground up with full reusability in mind. Astounding practicality meets breathtaking innovation as we witness how Starship's ingenious construction pushes the boundaries of what's possible in space exploration. Buckle up and prepare for a cosmic journey like no other. Let the comparison begin with Vulcan and Starship. We will explore in this video. Join us in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. But before we dive into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on the Starship and more. This design approach means that the rocket's components are not recovered for reuse after launch. However, ULA is exploring ways to recover and reuse sections of Vulcan's booster and engines in future missions. And speaking of reusability, SpaceX's Starship stands at the forefront. Unlike Vulcan, Starship is designed from its inception to be fully reusable. Both its first stage, known as the Super Heavy Booster, and the Starship's spacecraft itself are intended to be flown, landed, and flown again multiple times. This design is revolutionary in the field of rocket technology, as it moves away from the traditional approach of expendable launch vehicles. If successful, this design could significantly reduce the cost of accessing space, making it more affordable to conduct a wider range of missions, including ambitious crewed missions to the Moon, Mars, and potentially beyond. Comparing Vulcan and Starship reveals two different approaches to solving the challenges of space travel. Vulcan's plan to introduce partial reusability represents an evolution in traditional rocket design, enhancing efficiency, and reducing waste. On the other hand, Starship's fully reusable design is more of a revolution, potentially changing the economics of space travel entirely. Vulcan, with its robust design, is well suited for a variety of missions ranging from satellite deployment to deep space exploration. Its potential partial reusability will likely make it more competitive in the commercial launch market. Starship, with its full reusability and high payload capacity, is aimed at more ambitious missions, including interplanetary travel and the establishment of human settlements on other planets. Regarding their latest developments, SpaceX's Starship has already completed two orbital launch attempts in 2023. The first attempt took place on April 20th and the second on November 18th both launched from Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. Each of these flights ended with the destruction of the Starship and Super Heavy Booster prototypes by onboard autonomous flight termination systems. Despite these outcomes, SpaceX gathered valuable data from these flights to improve their design and increase the likelihood of reaching orbit in subsequent attempts. SpaceX is now gearing up for its third orbital test flight of Starship, expected to take place in February 2024. 
this upcoming test will be crucial in demonstrating key technologies needed for future lunar landings and other deep space missions. The test will likely involve transferring cryogenic propellant within Starship from a header tank to its main tank. This is a precursor to more complex future operations, where a Starship vehicle could transfer propellant to another Starship in orbit. A critical step for deep space missions where refueling in orbit would extend the spacecraft's range and capability. This upcoming test is part of SpaceX's broader collaboration with NASA's Artemis program. Under the Artemis program, NASA aims to return humans to the moon and establish a sustainable presence there as a stepping stone. For future manned missions to Mars Starship has been selected by NASA to be the lunar lander for the Artemis missions, tasked with transporting astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. While ULA and Blue Origin were celebrating the long-awaited success of their Vulcan flight, NASA encountered a setback. Their first robotic lander in over 50 years lost its trajectory to the moon just after a few hours of flight. The Peregrine lander, commissioned by NASA, was slated to touch down near the lunar south pole on the 23rd of February. A successful landing would have marked the first American moon mission since Apollo 17's arrival in December of 1972, and notably the inaugural lunar landing by a private company. Shortly after the spacecraft detached from the rocket's upper stage, controllers encountered a concerning issue. An anomaly with its thrusters hindered the spacecraft's ability to align itself with the sun, posing a potential threat to its capability to make a soft lunar landing. The initial indication of trouble arose when the spacecraft couldn't adjust its position to allow its solar panels to face the sun. The ground-based engineering team managed to command the craft to maneuver into the correct orientation, enabling its batteries to recharge. These batteries are crucial for powering Peregrine's communications and scientific instruments, which at present appear to be functioning adequately. After numerous attempts, that aspiration has now been officially shattered. Astronobotics and NASA have focused on a potential explanation for the issues affecting its Peregrine moon lander. Astronobotics' current hypothesis regarding the propulsion anomaly on the Peregrine spacecraft is that a valve between the helium pressurant and the oxidizer failed to reseal after activation during initialization. Stated company representatives in a post on X Tuesday afternoon, the 9th of January. This resulted in a surge of high-pressure helium causing a spike in the oxidizer tanks. The pressure beyond its operational limit and subsequent tank rupture, they further explained. In simpler terms, imagine this. You have a spaceship and inside it, there are things that help it move around. One of these things is like a door that controls the pressure inside. Astrobotic thinks that this door didn't close properly when they turned it on, which caused too much air to go into another part of the ship, making it burst from not being able to withstand the extra air. In space, a propellant system leaks acts as a thruster, kind of like how in the old cartoons we used to watch when a balloon gets poked and then it doesn't burst, but it goes flying around, which in turn hindered the team's ability to position the solar panels for charging. The batteries. The Peregrine lander relies on a hypergolic propellant mixture, lending hydrazine fuel with a nitric oxide and nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer solution. This established design ignites spontaneously when these substances come into contact, eliminating the need for an external ignition source. No need for lighters. Astrobotic spacecraft comprises two fuel and oxidizer tanks each, along with a fifth tank for helium pressure. The craft features five main engines and twelve smaller attitude control engines. Astrobotic engineers have devised a method to prevent the lander from spinning uncontrollably, however with a continuously operating reaction control thruster and a leaking propellant, the spacecraft's fuel will eventually deplete, resulting in its loss. While this explanation is preliminary, a comprehensive report will be prepared by an expert review board post-mission. All available data from the lander is being collected to support this analysis. The ULA's Vulcan rocket placed Peregrine on the intended translunar trajectory without any apparent issues. There is currently no evidence suggesting that the propulsion anomaly occurred due to the launch. Despite the success of ULA's Vulcan rocket in positioning Peregrine correctly, the unfortunate propulsion anomaly remains unresolved, however, in the realm of space missions, setbacks, though regrettable, are not entirely unforeseen. Despite the historic first uncrewed moon landing 60 years ago, reaching and landing on the moon remains an arduous task. This streak includes the pioneering landing on the far side of the moon and an ambitious mission that retrieved lunar rock samples for Earth. 
reviewing the world's lunar landers over the past decade, the success rate stands at 50-50. The forthcoming Intuitive Machines mission must succeed in its lunar landing to maintain this coin flip of a statistic. The lunar surface serves as a resting place for numerous robotic landers and rovers that fell short of fulfilling their intended missions. The landing lunar orbit is an achievement, but landing remains a formidable challenge. The moon's thin atmosphere provides minimal drag for a descending lander, and the surface is littered with boulders, complicating making safe landings very complicated. Additionally, sunlight creates shadows and glare that can confuse landing cameras and sensors. Furthermore, the absence of GPS systems on the moon means there's no automated guidance for landing. Astronobotic was poised to be the pioneering contractor in NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, or CLPS, an initiative aimed at leveraging the private sector to bolster the U.S. Space Agency's lunar aspirations. NASA's goal through various contracts is to establish a consistent series of moon missions, a crucial step in preparing for the eventual return of Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface. I want to tell you that I did sell this program consistently with a 50% likelihood of mission success. Thomas Serbuchan, a former associate administrator at NASA who spearheaded the agency's program to fund private lunar spacecraft, remarked before the launch. The CLIPS initiative aims to utilize private industry for delivering cargo to the moon as well, mirroring the method companies use to launch supplies to the International Space Station. NASA's mission emphasized that while a single CLIPS failure isn't catastrophic for the program, if commercial contractors encounter multiple setbacks, it would prompt NASA to naturally reassess its assumptions about CLIPS, and that's all for today's update. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel, and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member, so click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching, and see you next time.